Hi guys, welcome back to FoodTube. I'm Martin Morales and I'm thrilled to be back here to share a very special recipe all the way from Peru. Now my channel is all about helping you cook dishes in the comfort of your own home. And today we're gonna to cook a special recipe that is very close to my heart. It's a recipe that's called Pollo de mi tía Carmela. And it was taught to me by my auntie Carmela. That's her there. You can probably make it with all the ingredients you've already got in your fridge or in your store cupboard. And it's the perfect Peruvian chicken stew. So I'm gonna start by butchering the chicken and just prizing apart the different sections because we're gonna use those as individual portions for everyone. I'm gonna use a whole chicken, but you can use chicken thighs, chicken wings. This recipe is for four to six people. I like to use the whole of the chicken. It's really important because, yes, different parts of the chicken have tons of flavor. So we've got all of these portions. I'm gonna just cut the breast in half and then the legs and then the wings. And my great auntie Carmela always used to say, Dame la alita, give me the little chicken wing. She loved these. And then you're left with a carcass. And I just take some of the fat out. And I'm actually going to use all these fatty bits instead of oil, because I'm going to cook these first, extract the sort of fat and the oil, and cook the rest in that. So the chicken's now ready, and it's time for the sofrito. That's the onion, carrot, tomato, and garlic. I think with this chicken, because it's quite big, we'll need about an onion and a half. A really nice, big, juicy red onion. It's time to grate the carrots. First we peel, and then we're going to grate. Just use the medium setting on your grater. Now it's time for the garlic. Anything between four and six big garlic cloves. And just roughly chop these as finely as you can. Now it's time to blitz up the tomatoes. And just very simple, I just like to put them all in the blender. You can also finely chop them. Add a couple more. It's time to go to the kitchen. Now we're going to get the fat and the oil out of the chicken. So we're going to get the chicken skins and put those in the pan. Make sure your pan is really hot before you throw the chicken skin in there. And whilst the fat is coming out of that chicken, the smell is also coming out, so the smell of that lovely crispy fried chicken is really, really lovely. So once you've arranged all the chicken pieces in there, add the cumin all over. And I'm using about two teaspoonfuls. Add some salt, about a teaspoonful and a half, and then crack a load of pepper on it. Again, it's probably the equivalent of about a teaspoonful and a half. Just leave that there for about five to seven minutes. So after a few minutes, just check to see what it's like. Oh yeah, so we're nice and golden there, nice and crisped up. And we're just gonna turn all these round now. Just leave these for another five to seven minutes. I think that's ready. Let's take these out. You just want to get them golden and crispy, leaving all the fat in there, because I'm going to use that. So now we're going to get the onion in there to caramelize that. And I always like to start with the onion. It takes a little bit longer than the garlic and the carrots. We add the rest of the carrot and the garlic. Now that's all beginning to caramelize. Now that's ready, let's grab the Blitz tomato and put that all in there. So that's bubbling nicely. Now let's put a couple of cups of water in there and then add the chicken back in there, stir it around and then leave that to stew for about 30 minutes. We're going to make the rice. And I'm going to make a rice with a bit of garlic to give it a bit more flavour. So we're just prizing apart about four garlic cloves and just chop those as finely as you can. Add two tablespoons of olive oil. Then add all the garlic. And just sweat this up. Don't let them crisp up too much. Don't let them even burn because that makes it really bitter. We're going to add two small cups of basmati rice. Add some salt, just about a teaspoonful of salt. Let that fry with it. Add four small cupfuls of water into this. 
and just turn it down until it's a gentle simmer. So it's been about 10 minutes, and I just want to check how the rice is doing. Mmm, that's almost ready. So I turn this down and actually take it off the heat, and it will carry on cooking just right there. We're almost there. Let's have a look. And what you're looking for is to make sure that the fat has rendered from the chicken there. It means it's also got right down to the bone and it's cooking the bone as well. This is now ready and we take it to the table and it's ready to plate up. But before we do that, we're going to make a really cheeky little salsa criolla. To make the salsa criolla, it's about a quarter portion of an onion per person. Chop that up, julienne style, so very thinly sliced. Because in that way, you still have the crunch, and the texture and the sizing that's going to give it some personality in the dish. Let's cut half a tomato. Just grab a chilli and just a tiny bit of the chilli just to give it a little kick. And chop that up as finely as you can. Two or three sprigs of coriander. And then finely chop that. Roll this lime, just release the juices. Cut that in half. Squeeze that. Then add some salt, big pinch of salt. Some pepper. There's your salsa, right there, ready. Now we're gonna plate up. We've got the rice ready. We're gonna start with that, and we're gonna use this cup. We're gonna use it to make a nice shape and give it some height. And then we're gonna grab the chicken. And it's all about the juices. And just to finish off, we'll put the salsa criolla on the dish. Beautiful. Wow, look at that. Wow, this is the pollo de mi tía Carmela. This is Carmela's chicken. Thank you so much, Auntie Carmela. Muchas gracias, mi vida. I miss you, I love you, but here, that's where you are. You're right here, right in my heart. And now it's gonna go in my tummy as well. Let's try it. Oh, I always start with the rice and getting the juice in there. Putting a bit of this salsa criolla there as well. And some of those flavors. Mmm. Mmm. Seven years old, sitting in that table with my auntie Carmela, her sister Otilia, my sister next to me, and we're staying out the weekend. It's a hot, sunny day. It's taking me right back. I've lost for words. So I hope you liked that recipe. If you did, let me know. Write your comments right below. And don't forget to check out the Lomo Saltado recipe. You can find that on my channel, Martin's Peruvian Kitchen. Subscribe to FoodTube, subscribe to my channel, and hope you enjoyed what you saw today, and I hope you make it at home. See you soon, take care, bye-bye.